going to get some more analysis on this now from Peter McPhee in Melbourne. He's an author and professor emeritus of French history at the University of Melbourne. Thank you for joining us on this news hour. Emmanuel Macron knows his country is deeply divided and he knows he has another five years to try and bridge those divides. But how and where does he even start to try and do this? That's right, because uh, one of the key messages of this election campaign and an and outcome has been that France is profoundly polarised by uh, between a, a centre-right president and a hard left and a hard right. Uh, Macron's immediate challenge, I think, is going to be confronting uh, a resurgent left. Uh, one of the surprises of the first round was the strong showing of uh, Mélenchon from the hard left, uh, who is openly talking about trying to poll very well at the legislative elections for the National Assembly uh, in six weeks' time in the hope of becoming the Prime Minister. Uh, so <laughs> uh, Macron has just had to deal with the far right. He may now have to deal with the hard left in the next set of elections. Yeah, he's got a lot to deal with indeed. And his opponent in this final round, Marine Le Pen, it was the third time that she has run for president. And this has been her best showing so far. Do you expect her to try again in another five years? I'd be surprised. I mean, it, she's still a, a, quite a young person and uh, she may well want to run again. But I just think that uh, having had three defeats, and remembering that this time she tried very hard to distance herself, to, to soften the image that she has, uh, but even so it wasn't enough. And in the end, even though people may not have been enthusiastic about Macron, uh, they were prepared to go to the polls to say that Le Pen is far too divisive a character in terms of her attitude to Europe, to NATO, uh, to the Muslim minority in France. She's simply uh, unelectable. So I would be surprised if she does run again. Well, the EU is happy to see Macron retain his presidency. It's continuity for them. But will they also be concerned about the growing support for Le Pen, as well as parties like her, the far right? And that's not just in France, but it's also something that we're seeing in many other countries across Europe. That's absolutely correct. And I think it's one reason why several of the leaders of other European countries were prepared to intervene before the election uh, in, with a view to reinforcing the position of Macron, because he is seen to be, with the departure of Angela uh, Merkel last year, he's really seen to be perhaps the most significant leader uh, of a united Europe. His great achievement in recent times, of course, as the chair of the European Commission, has been to win the support of all 27 European countries for sanctions against uh, against Russia. And I think that across Europe, this uh, victory of Macron, which is quite decisive, is bound to be welcomed by the vast majority of governments as a vote for Europe, as a reinforcement of the importance of NATO, the importance of Europe. Peter McPhee, really appreciate your analysis and putting that all into context for us. Thank you so much.